Hello, Master Tech Mark here. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to use an automotive wiring diagram uh, to fix electrical problems uh, with your vehicle. And this is a method that I was um, taught way back in 1984 by my electrical um, uh, instructor and it has worked well for me over the years and I use this method on every electrical repair and we're at the ufixcars.com website on the uh, car repair manuals page and uh, I'm going to take us over to all data so that we can uh, find a wiring diagram uh, to look at and I'll go ahead and click on the uh, sample uh, vehicles and I'll go ahead and select the 98 uh, Chevy Tahoe and let's make up a, a hypothetical uh, problem uh, let's say that the horns do not work um, on the our Tahoe and we've checked the fuse and the fuse is good um, so to find a wiring diagram I'll just go ahead to the search function and uh, I'll type in horn and um, this will bring us to all of the information about the horn and I'll just go ahead and click the top one and there are uh, diagnostic uh, tree charts here and um, troubleshooting hints uh, but let's just go ahead and click on the electrical diagrams and this will bring us to the uh, Chevrolet wiring diagram uh, for this circuit and the method that I use for uh, uh, all electrical diagnosis is I will go ahead and I'll start at the load and I will work my way back towards the battery and this is the fuse right here and there's no problem with checking the fuse first that's easy enough but like I said our fuse is good yet our horns do not blow so what I'll do is I'll start at the load and when I say the word load this is either a light or the horns or a speaker uh, but basically the um, end part of the circuit so I'll have somebody push on the horn pad and activate the horns and I'll check for uh, 12 volts here um, and I can just use a test light since it's a 12 volt system and I will check for power here and if I have power here and I have a good ground well then that means that the horns themselves um, have failed and need to be replaced uh, but for argument's sake let's say that we check for power here and there is no power well then I will start to head back towards the battery and we'll see that the first thing I come to here is a connector and this connector has a number and we can go to component location and it'll show us a picture of exactly uh, where this connector is but I'll go ahead and check for power on both sides of this connector and if I have power on one side and no power on the other well then I have a corroded connection or a poor or a loose connection but let's say that I have no power here I will continue back towards the battery and this brings us to another connector and again I will check for power on both sides but uh, let's say there's no power here I will continue back towards the battery and this brings us to the horn relay and again we can find this in the component uh, location uh, diagram uh, but I will check for power here coming out of the relay and we'll say that we have no power here uh, what I will do is I will again head back towards the battery and check for power on this side of the relay and if I have power coming in and no power coming out of this relay this is a good indication that this relay may have failed uh, but we'll have to check um, the rest of this relay so again I'll head back towards the battery and we'll see that the relay has power coming in on two points so I'll check for power here and I'll check for power here and if we have power coming in nothing coming out I want to go ahead and check this last remaining terminal and this terminal at the relay heads directly to the horn switch so and it applies a ground here that activates this relay and you can see that the relay has a switch here and these lines indicate a magnetic field and when we apply ground here it energizes this coil and pulls this switch closed so I'll check for a good ground here if I have a good ground at this point power coming into these two points and nothing coming out well then I have a relay that has failed and just to let you know what I find most of the time 
is that when I use this method and I start at the load and work towards the battery I find my problem here on the very first step more often than not it is just more common to have a problem with the load on the circuit than it is with the rest of the circuit so again using this method you may find your problem with the very first step but if you apply this same technique to every automotive electrical problem that you have you're going to wind up getting very good at diagnosing electrical problems and I thank you for watching this video and I hope that you'll visit our ufixcars.com website I have a lot of support information for do-it-yourself auto mechanics and I thank you again for watching the video